Well, what a wonderful rally day this is. Um, I do, before we even dig into the scripture today, I do want to thank our FAM committee, our FAM staff here at the church, as well as our musicians of all ages, our youth and children. Now that they've left the sanctuary, some of them, we're thanking them, but uh, if you see them after worship, just uh, give them hugs, handshakes, and high fives. Uh, for their work in ministry and, and leading us in worship today. Our technology team, thank them uh, as well, and thank you for being the church. It is wonderful to see so many of you wearing uh, FPC t-shirts, so that is wonderful. Uh, one quick announcement, which is that um, in cleaning up food today, uh, somebody grabbed a very special towel, I'm sure by mistake, but if you go to go home and realize you have in your car amongst the things you're taking home uh, a, a box and a towel that doesn't belong to you. If you could bring that back. Um, thank you so much. But now hear these words from Matthew's Gospel, the 18th chapter. Jesus is teaching here. Listen for the word of the Lord. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church." And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such a one be to you as a Gentile or a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God indeed. I'm going to start our Rally Day sermon today with a statement that might get me in a little bit of trouble. I hope that got your attention. Are you sitting on the edge of your seat? Are you ready? Here we go. When Jesus says, for where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them, that is not an excuse for a bunch of people not to come to worship. I realize I am speaking to the proverbial choir here. You all are here. But I don't know about you, so often when I've heard this passage referenced, it's been referenced in terms of, well, there aren't many people here in church today, but there are at least two or three of us, so it's okay. God's here. And that is true. That is true. But I don't think that's what Jesus was teaching his followers there. Actually, if we had in mind the real power and authority that Jesus is giving us, the church, we probably think very different about this passage. You see, the church is being given in this passage very real power and authority. He's saying whenever you gather, whenever you gather, whether many of you or few of you, yes, in my name, I'm there. You have the presence of and the authority of Jesus Christ when you gather in the name of Jesus Christ. Now that just rings a little bit different, doesn't it? Yeah. 
Let that sink in. We here this morning have the presence and the authority of Jesus Christ. You are me in the world, Jesus is saying. We probably heard the term the body of Christ. We talk about the church as the body of Christ. We are the body of Christ. Yes. That's it exactly. That's it precisely. That's what Jesus is saying. You are me in the world while I am not there. Not there in the same way, right, after he would ascend into heaven. We're him. And and 2,000 years later, the church, I think, is still coming to terms with that, what that means. Sometimes we take that power and authority boldly and wield it unwisely. Sometimes, I think a lot of the time, we fail to recognize the authority that we've truly been given. So let's unpack this a little bit. Just what authority that is. Our passage this morning, I I look at it as being kind of in three sections, right? We've got the first section is very practical. If another member of the church sins against you, and what is the sort of formula for reconciling with that person, right? And the hope is, the hope is, according to Jesus' teaching, that they will, there will be reconciliation and they can be welcomed fully back into the fellowship of the church. But then he goes a step folder, uh, further, pardon me, and he says, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. We talk about power and authority. Do you hear what he's saying here? Do you really hear what he's saying here? We're going to unpack that in a minute. And then the third part is he says, wherever two of you uh, agree on anything, your father's going to grant it. Whenever two or three of you are gathered, I'm there with you. Again, that's not just a reassurance that when we as church maybe have smaller numbers, it's still church, it's still God here in this space. It's the fact that when we gather, Jesus is here. We embody Jesus in this space and in the world. And so there are two sort of lessons that I'm carrying from this passage, and I think that we should carry with us. One is that we're to be in agreement with each other. It's very important. Jesus goes through a lot of steps to tell us how we can be reconciled with each other when we're not in community with each other. Be in agreement with one another. And the second part is, as such, when we are in agreement and when we are gathered together in Jesus' name, we have the power to be co-creators of a new world to come. Hear that? Be in agreement with each other. And two, we have power then that's been given us to help create the new heaven and earth. Co-creators of the world. Now, again, we're going to unpack a lot of that, and some of that we're going to unpack today, some of that we're going to unpack in coming weeks. But I want to begin with the notion that before the fall, humanity was in perfect relationship with God and each other. Now, it was only Adam and Eve at that point, (laughs) according to Genesis, But as William Cavanaugh writes, humankind was created for communion, but is everywhere divided. That is, in the fall, in sinning, whenever we sin, we divide ourselves. We break relationship with each other. That's really uh, one definition of sin. It's It's a breaking of our relationship with God, and it's a splintering of our relationships with other humans. Are you with me so far with that? So that's why Jesus goes to such great lengths to explain how we can be reconciled. Because if we're going to be this body of Christ that Jesus tells us to be, we can't be splintered. We can't be split apart. We have to learn to be reconciled. Maybe not perfectly, (laughs) but we have to learn to do it. And so, Jesus comes to restore that community in the world. And that's why there's such a great concern in our passage for relationships. You may have noticed the last couple weeks we've talked a lot about encounters in the Bible. 
We've talked about relationships as we've looked at the scriptures lately. And this is one reason why it's important. Jesus is telling his followers that as the church, we have the amazing power to loose and to bind. That is, do you hear that? He's telling us we have the the power, the authority to make decisions on earth. We can forgive sins against one another. Or we can choose for them not to be forgiven. That's pretty serious stuff, don't you think? Power is not to be taken lightly. It's an awesome responsibility. Honestly, reconciling makes work in the church pretty messy and hard. But it's always worth it. Human relationships, living together in community, is not easy. And to a certain degree, in our consumer culture, in our individualized society, it's even harder for us than maybe in prior generations to live in community together. To be the kind of community that Jesus is talking about. To be unified in our asking God for God's will to be done. Yeah, it's hard to be the church. It's hard to be the church in every era. But it's worth working together to be the church. Yeah. Because, and here's the fun part, when we can work together, when we can be reconciled with each other, when we can be the community that is the body of Christ, we are given these amazing powers and authorities in the world to co-create with God. I want to, think, I, I, I want to suggest you think of your life as a co-creation with God. What is it that you do? What is it you do with your time? Can you think about what you do with much of your time as creating something with God? Maybe you're creating an environment in the places that you dwell or that you work that is more hopeful and energetic and kind and truthful. Maybe you do something that really makes a difference in the lives of the people around you, and I suggest you probably do that more than you realize. But when you do that, I want to encourage you to think that you are co-creating that space, that environment with God. Theologians have pointed out that when God created humans, and God created also, you may recall, all the animals at that time, the first thing God did was have humans name them. And theologians have said that is a part of God's intent that we are helping to make and shape the world that God had originally made. Do you see that? God has placed us on the earth and promised, promised that there would be a new heaven and new earth, and we have a role in making, bringing that new earth about. That's why Jesus gives us such authority as the church, not individually, but as the church together. It's part of God's intent that we, God's people, would be in community with each other and would help make the world the way God intended it to be. Now, none of this should surprise us very much. We talk about these things a lot. We talk about being the community. We talk about being the body of Christ. We talk about bringing about, helping God bring about the kingdom of heaven on earth. But have we thought about the fact that we together are co-creators with God in that endeavor? Have we realized and recognized the amazing authority and power we've given in Christ's name? We do have the power and authority to change things together. No, we can't do it alone. We do it with God. 
And maybe all we can do is give the world glimpses of what the new heaven and earth will look like. But that may be enough. In the classic Russian novel, The Brothers Karamazov, one of Dostoevsky's characters is a monk uh, named Zosima. I, I, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but he talks about his call narrative, the, the, the narrative, the story of how he became a monk, right? And this person, when he was a younger man, was in the military. And uh, he offended somebody, and, and they ended up dueling one another. And on the eve of the duel, uh, Zosima says he felt convicted in his heart. And he woke up early that morning, the duel was to take place, and he watched the sunrise. And he realized that he could not duel this other person. Oh, he showed up, and he let the other person shoot at him, but he really didn't intentionally fire back. And when everybody wondered why, why his erratic behavior, why he was refusing to duel, why he was sacrificing his honor in such a way, he answered this way. He said, gentlemen, look around you at the gifts of God, the clear sky, the pure air, the tender grass, the birds. Nature is beautiful and sinless. And we, only we, are godless and foolish. And we don't understand that life is a paradise. For we have only to understand that, and it will at once be fulfilled in all its beauty. We shall embrace each other and weep. I, I won't ask you to embrace each other and weep today. But something of that call is there for us every day. To celebrate God's creation, to be unified together in Christ and the purposes that God has drawn us together. To recreate with God the world as God intends it to be. Remember, to be in agreement as Christ's church and to be in agreement with God in co-creating this new world. Rally Day is an opportunity to remember all the ways, or many of the ways, that you can participate in the life of the church. What we have here is important, not just as something else that matters or makes a difference, not just a good community, but a community that represents Jesus Christ in the world. A community that co-creates the new heaven and earth with God. What's more important than that? The church has a primary role in this, in bringing about the new heaven and the new earth. Don't laugh. I know the church isn't perfect. <laughs> it certainly has flaws. We all do. And I'm not being naive when I say that either about the church or about the challenges that we face. Take it up with God if you have a problem with it, because 2,000 years later, there doesn't seem to be a plan B. If there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth, God will bring it about, but God will bring it about through Christ's church. So what are we waiting for? What part of God's new creation in your life and in the world around you, are you called to bring about? Amen.